so right. Uh, Hardcore Robotics has been the one team to complete the trifecta. You have the giant nut, the giant bolts, and your bounty medallion. What has been the secret to your success? In order to make robots that are good, you gotta start out with making some that suck and then just keep improving them over time. It's, it's never about huge changes. It's always about small iterations. Just keep making it better, keep improving the robot. And that process doesn't stop. It, it's, as long as you're competing, you're always doing that. There's no such thing as a finished robot. You're always gonna be working at it to try to make it better. There's one question I see people beat you over the head with, which is, why no wheel guards? <laughs> why, why are they so open and exposed? There, there, there are some mechanical reasons. First off, you look at the width of the weapon, the tires need to be as wide as the weapon is. Because if they're narrowed in further, it's even harder to drive. It's gonna bounce all over the place. All the cartwheels it does, they get worse if I don't keep that, that square setup where the wheels are as far apart as the weapon. So the wheels have to be kind of where they are with this length of weapon. So where would wheel guards go then? They're gonna be, you know, the, the whole robot now is gonna be eight feet wide with guards out here to try to, to, try, try to protect them. So some of it is it just mechanically doesn't make sense to put them on with this design of robot. The next reason it's a bad idea is weight management. So if I'm gonna have to curl something all the way around those wheels to try to protect them, I don't think I could do that for less than 20 pounds. I just don't think I could do something that would be a, that would effectively protect those tires for less than that. So where is that 20 pounds gonna come from? I mean, I could probably save a few pounds in the wheels. I could core them then, because I wouldn't need to protect them. The bottom line of it, the only way I could have enough weight to put a wheel guard around those wheels is if I took it out of the weapon. And that's not what Tombstone is. Tombstone is a big weapon. That's what it is. That's the whole point of the robot, is to be a big kinetic energy weapon. So placing guards around the wheels is going to be counterproductive to do that. What got you into robotics? A long time ago, I used to teach computer networking in an adult college. And my boss, the department head, was a fan of the original BattleBox television show. And so he would tape it, and bring his VHS tapes into work. And in between classes, we would watch this. And at the time, I had a lot of fabrication background, a lot of cutting, welding, writing. And of course, he was really good at, at the electronic portions of this. So between him and I, we decided this is something that the two of us could do. We were going to build a, a battle bot together. Um, unfortunately, life got in the way. He ended up taking another job and leaving. And so him and I never actually worked on it. And so the, the project sort of morphed into a father and son project with, between me and Justin. And, you know, it's, it's, that, that was where the bug started was from, uh, from a boss who basically lit my fuse and then ran away and made me do all the work. <laughs> what, I've already, what I've already filmed. So, there's a reason they're shaped the way they are. You know, it's a matter of trying to maximize the moment of inertia. So, all the weight out at the end, you can just hit harder for the same amount of weight. And so, in each of these, they're machined and shaped based upon that. So, thickest portion of the weapon is out at the end, so it's higher moment of inertia. Here we actually have extra pieces there, so it's, it's a, just a way of maximizing the impact when you hit somebody. You gotta hit them hard. So Ray, what do you choose for your weapon material? So there's no real right answer for weapon material. Everyone has their, their strengths and their weaknesses. Um, so this one here is an aluminum bar with steel teeth. The steel in this case is 4140. I've tried using harder steel for these. Um, I've never been happy with it. You can split the tooth down the center. So the 4140 is the best option I have as far as strength to toughness. 
and even there it, it still ends up giving me some issues once in a while. Um, this by far is the hardest hitting weapon bar I have because it stores all the weight at the end. Uh, sometimes I'll use an AR style. So these these two weapons here are AR-500. Um, it is not as hard as I would like physically, so it, 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 it will dull and it will get mushed at the end from impact. But it's virtually impossible to snap and it's incredibly difficult to bend. So it makes for a it makes for a good compromise weapon that works really well against everybody. The hardest material that I can use for a weapon bar is the S7. Um, the upsides obviously is it is very hard. So if you get somebody that uses a lot of AR style armor, this is harder than that, and it can dig into it and deliver the kinetic energy. Um, the downsides that it when it fails, it fails spectacularly. It will crack, it will shatter, pieces will snap off. So it's, it, this used to be kind of the standard. Everybody just used S7 for their weapons, but with the advent of more and more AR-500 armor, it's getting harder to say that because it, it's just easier to snap them and break them, so. Um, Always looking for the best material and this, the, the next new thing to, to make weapon bars out of. Please like and subscribe this video, and of course, like and subscribe stuff on my channel as well, Ray Billings, and uh, check out all the videos. We have a lot of cool stuff up. So he comes by every night to beg and plead for cat food. So this is the hey, the cat food bowl is empty. Could you please come give me some cat food? <laughs> so you can see he, he's. Not wild, but he does at least run away. He'll sit the other side of the barbecue there and just watch me while I put food in the bowl. Come on, John. So, he's about as unaggressive as raccoons could possibly get. And then, and then what is, what's your feral's cat's name? That's Smudge. Smudge. Oh, it's Smudge. So wait, let me get this straight. The feral cat outside you've named, but the, your actual pet cat in the house you have not named. Kit, the cat in the house is named Kitty. The one outside has a name because he's got smudges all over him. Look at him. All right, Builder Blog. For a hardcore robotics poker chip and stickers, what would you name Ray Billings' indoor cat? I want to know. What would you name Builder Blog? And last week's winners of the two different giveaways we've done, first one for the sword, that goes to the Primal Goat. Congratulations, bringing up our own shop tips video was a smart move. And you won the poker chip. And the winner of the t-shirt, the BattleBots Legend Scorpios t-shirt, is Luke Wilson. So congratulations, you two. Please answer the comments Diana left on your comments, the comment comments, and uh, we will get those items on their way to you. This piece right here is one of the uh, tires that came off a bombshell when I won the championship. So uh, the post-fight picture of Tombstone and, and the team standing there with the giant nut sitting on top of Tombstone. It's sitting on top of this. <laughs> we actually took it out of the arena and used it as a coaster for the giant nut. Uh, this is one of the uh, pulleys off of uh, Minotaur. Okay. So this is for their, their weapon system right here. That was a, uh, this is, thanks Ray. You're giving me a bad time for that. Uh, this is that's that's not that important of a match. Probably don't need to talk about that one. Okay. Um, this was escape velocity, um, and they were really quite sure that this honeycombed armor was going to hold up to tombstone. So um, great, great group of guys. I got them all to sign it, so I, I kind of kept that one because it's kind of interesting. And uh, that's half a Witch Doctor's weapon right there. Um, interestingly, in our fights, whoever 
breaks the weapon ends up uh, um, winning the match. So when I broke my weapon against them, I won the match. When they broke their weapon on us, they won the match. So uh, it kind of counterintuitive. One of the front spars off of Bronco. Uh, so uh, that was a pretty violent match. That was from uh, season one or two. This is uh, half of the weapon bar off of Rotator. Um, it's a great match. Um, I'm not sure if that one would have gone the distance. I, that was kind of interesting because I was on fire for most of that match. So I would have been great if that would have gone the distance. This is half the hammer of the Judge. Um, so that was the super heavyweight version of Tombstone that cut that off. Um, this here is a piece off of uh, Vlad the Impaler when I fought that at uh, uh, Rubik's. This is the most recent edition right here. Um, this is from off of Hypershock in the match at uh, the Amazon Remars event. Um, they were pretty impressed. We were actually able to cut completely through it and get the, uh, get the sprocket assembly off the back. Nobody's ever been able to do that. This is off of uh, Sawblaze. So that was a uh, uh, great match there and managed to pull that act actually completely off the robot. So he signed it and gave it to me. This one right here. That's the glove I was wearing when I got my hand cut up. Oh, damn. So that, that one, that one stays up there to remind me to be less of an idiot when I'm working with powered equipment. It was a, it was a whole glove. It was a whole glove when I had it. I'm amazed you still have a hand, right? Across here, around that finger. Took a pretty good hunk out of the thumb. And the fact that it's all said and done, it's, it's amazing what the human body can put up with. You know. So this is the this is the old frame of tombstone here. So this is the basic layout that we've used since season one. So the only difference is that we would have had the that sort of end cap on that season one. But this is the, the, the dimensions and layout of the frame all the way up into the most recent season, season six. This frame here was a redesign we did for this past season. And we're trying to compact things a little bit and be more efficient with the space. But in doing that, we end up with some balance problems that we didn't have before. So the basic dimensions from the bend to the nose hasn't changed. This, this is the same between the two robots, but from here back, we tried to compact things. So from the bend to the back of the robot is under 17 inches. Okay, it's like 16 and three quarter inches. But on the old frame, it's just under 19 inches. So it's, the new frame is significantly shorter. The problem is we're taking weight off the back of the robot, which makes the weight balance more nose heavy. And so it drives differently because I don't get the same amount of down pressure on, on the tires and you just don't get enough traction. Unfortunately, one of the problems with the upgrade to the drive system was the fact that the Wayachi gearbox and motor is, a, is an inline setup. Whereas the NPC that we'd used previously, the output shaft is offset from the motor, which offset the tires forward, which helped with that driving issue. So now not only did we cut weight off the back, we moved the tires further back in comparison to the overall weight of the robot, and it does drive significantly worse than it did before. So for the future, we're gonna have to make some changes to the layout try to keep the robot as competitive as we would like to see it. So, the internet must know, Ray. Are you going to RoboGames? RoboGames has always been one of my absolute favorite events. It's, it's great in so many ways. And so, when I found out that it was coming back, I was very excited to be part of that again. So, uh, we're gonna build a couple of robots, I'm thinking, for RoboGames. I will definitely 100% be there I wouldn't imagine being anywhere else. It's going to be a lot of fun, and you should come watch. You, 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 you <laughs> this, this is this is a good one. Okay. <laughs> at that at that same event, 
So at this at this point in time, this was when Megabyte was undefeated for like three years in a row. I mean, he was just a dominant robot in that category. It's just every uh, heavyweight event he went to, he won. Right? And there were only a few robots that had ever beaten him, right? And at that NPC event, it's me, it's Matt Maxim, and it's Brian and Bay, and we're sitting down and we're eating dinner at a restaurant. And John and Carl walk in, and he's like, Megabyte's only lost three times in its entire career, and they're all sitting at that table, you know? <laughs> 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 butt stuff. Butt stuff. Okay. <laughs> That's the end guard. <laughs> <laughs>